I'm here with Stephen Cherniski, biochemist and author of Caffeine Blues. Stephen, we hear such conflicting information about caffeine as illustrated in your interview May 2023 with Esquire magazine. Well, the conflicting information comes from two factors. Number one, a foundational principle of science is everything is dose related. In my research, I couldn't find any evidence that a cup or two of coffee in the early in the day would be harmful. Of course, a cup is defined as six ounces, containing about 100 milligrams of caffeine. Now, again, 10 ounces, paper cup. Uh, most people think of this as a cup of coffee, but really that's two cups. Again, 200 milligrams of caffeine. And the most commonly consumed Starbucks, called the Grande, 16 ounces of coffee, of caffeine. And then again, the commuter mug with 24 ounces delivering about 400 milligrams of caffeine. Wow. Oh. Well, I know a lot of people that in the morning they'll have either one of these and then mid-morning another one. Yeah, it may be a Red Bull or a Monster Energy drink uh, when they get the brain fog later on in the afternoon. Yes. So everything is dose-related. What is factor number two? Ah, genetics. You see, caffeine is a drug. And like all drugs, it has to be detoxified by the liver. Mm. Uh, this is accomplished by a remarkable enzyme system that breaks caffeine down into less stimulating compounds like methyl xanthine. Mm. Now, this enzyme system, the CYP450, is highly variable. In fact, we now know that about 50% of people detoxify caffeine rapidly, meaning that CYP450 is very active. Uh, again, this is genetic. You're, you're going to inherit this variant from your parents. Now, here's an important point. The other 50% of people, roughly half with everyone you know, they're slow metabolizers, meaning that with repeated doses of caffeine, the stimulant effects will tend to accumulate. Now, let me illustrate. Uh, in a rapid metabolizer, the stimulant effect of caffeine looks like this. including the production of stress hormones like epinephrine and cortisol. Uh, and so, again, it goes up and then you're going to detoxify. But with repeated doses of a slow metabolizer, stress hormones can stay elevated and that causes or contributes to insomnia, anxiety, panic attacks, hypertension, and increased risk for cardiovascular disease. This is well documented in the medical literature but poorly reported in the popular press where everything is oversimplified to either being all bad or all good. <laughs> well, please explain to people how they can find out if they're a rapid metabolizer or a slow metabolizer. Well, it's not easy. There's a genetic test, but that's expensive. An easier way is to be sensitive to how you feel, your heart rate, your blood pressure, your mood, uh, after any kind of caffeine. And then look at your sleep quality. Do you fall asleep quickly or do you toss and turn? And how do you feel in the morning? Do you feel rested and rejuvenated? Because slow metabolizers tend to be caught in this vicious cycle where they don't sleep well, they wake up feeling exhausted, and what do they turn to to get going? <laughs> Coffee, you see? So that's the vicious cycle that only makes it worse. Thank you so much, Stephen. Any final comments? Yes, remember this. No one is tired due to a caffeine deficiency. Caffeine blues. <laughs>